Greetings. This is Principal Kefele, and welcome to another edition of Message to a New and Aspiring Principal. In this case, this is a part two. Many of you who will see this video will recall I made another video about a month ago now called Thoughts to Consider for the Assistant Principal Job Interview. I made that in a hotel um, right in Lake Tahoe, Nevada, not really anticipating large numbers of views in a, in a short period of time, but I thought that it would be steady over a long period of time. But here we are a month later and 3,200 candidate, candidates have watched this video. But I've received tremendous feedback from the video. Folks telling me they got the job because of the video. Folks telling me they want more. And the video was long, longer than anything I've ever done as far as a selfie video. It was 45 minutes long. Um, I followed it up with a principal video that was an hour long, but in, term, in terms of the assistant principal, that was pretty long. But um, folks wanted more information. They said, give me more. Give me more. So, you know, I kind of waited and monitored the, the activity on the first video and, and kept reading all the feedback, the emails, the Facebook messages, the direct messages on Twitter, the, the tweets. And people just elated. So I said, okay. It's time to follow up on that video. So I decided today, I'm not on the road speaking today, but I am doing some work here, so I'm dressed, but I'm also dressed for the video, but I'm here in the, what I call the lab. This is right here in my living room slash dining room. You see back here, this is like my office area. So this is where I get it done. This is where I do the work. So I want to spend a little time with you. This is specifically for that person that is interviewing for that first assistant principalship, or maybe you've been one and you're interviewing for another one, maybe you relocated or whatever it is, but you're going in to that assistant principal interview. Well, with the first part, let me say the information is solid. I talk about instructional leadership. I talk about supervision. I talk about school climate and culture. We talk about appearance. We talk about um, just a variety of, of, of areas that one should be very comfortable in articulating at, a, at an assistant principal job interview. But now in this one, I wanna go a little bit further. I wanna share some other information that you've gotta be ready for because as I cautioned everyone that watched the first video, you can't go in there talking about discipline, discipline, discipline. You know, I went, I, I went all out in that first video talking about that, so I won't do it here, but, I, but I'll just reinforce it here that being an assistant principal doesn't mean that you're going into a school to be the lead disciplinarian. That's the wrong mindset, it's the wrong attitude, it's the wrong focus in terms of what school leadership is all about. So I shared about uh, 10, 11 different items in the first video, got about 10 or 11 on this one. So let's jump right into it. Number one, one of the, one of the most popular buzzwords in education today across the country, if not throughout the world is the word equity. Once again, equity. And I wanna say from the outset, equity and equality are not synonymous. Once again, equity and equality are not synonymous. So we cannot treat them the same. So when you go into that interview, there's a strong possibility that some kind of question will be posed that asks you about how you will ensure equity is occurring in your school. Not equality, because see, equality means everybody's the same, everybody, everybody's being treated the same way. And that's not necessarily what we want, because everybody's in a different place. What we want to ensure is that equity is occurring, because equity means we're being fair to everybody. Because some people are, are here, some people are here, and that's not just students, but that's staff. So we want to make sure that we're fair with everybody. Now, when we say equity, I'm speaking generically right now, just children right so we want to be fair to all children but equity questions will not necessarily be confined to the generic children equity questions may may be uh, delivered to you in in the form of race ethnicity gender right differences in children um it, it, it may have to do with socioeconomic status it may have to do with young people who are labeled at risk, young people who are labeled disadvantaged, young people who are labeled underserved. 
So, so and, and then you've got other children who may be labeled privileged, right? You've got other student students who may not bring the same sets of challenges to school with them every day that the student that's underserved may bring. So now the question that may be presented to you in the interview is, how do you ensure equity exists for all students, regardless of, of the experiential background that they're bringing to the school? How do you ensure that there's balance there as it relates to equity, see? Because as leader, you've got to lead the effort, although you're not the principal of the school. And I talked about that in the first uh, message, the part one, where I said your role is to support the principal, you're not the principal. But in your support of the principal and in your leadership capacity, how do you ensure that equity exists, equity abounds in that building so that all young people are treated fairly? Those kinds of questions will more than likely come up and you've got to be prepared to deal with them. So you've got to prepare yourself way beforehand. Secondly, and in close relationship to equity is cultural responsiveness relative to instruction. And one might add cultural competence relative to instruction. See, in, 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 in your typical school, there are children, unless you're, you're in some monolithic school, which they do exist, but in many cases they do not. They're, they're, they're diverse. So here in these diverse schools where you've got various different cultural backgrounds in a school, how will you ensure that your teachers plan lessons that are culturally responsive to every learner in the classroom. See, how, how will you ensure that every learner sees him or herself in the lesson? See, because if, if young person doesn't see him or herself in the lesson, then it's, it is a higher probability the young person is going to be turned off by the lesson because the lesson isn't relevant. Young person doesn't see the correlation between working hard today and success later on in life, right? Because young person doesn't see self in the lesson. So I'm saying to you as a candidate for an assistant principal position, you've got to, you've got to be able to answer the question, how will you ensure that teachers are culturally responsive, culturally relevant, culturally appropriate, culturally sensitive to the learners and thereby culturally competent within their practice as teachers? See, a lot of that, you know, when we talk about teacher preparation at, at, at the undergrad level, a lot of that culturally responsive um, um, work that a teacher must be very much conversant in is not necessarily covered at a lot of in a lot of undergraduate programs. That's something a teacher may pick up along the way through professional development if they opt to do it or if they're in a district that feels that it's, it's, it's a necessity. But I'm saying to you, as you're going to this interview, you've got to be prepared to speak very intelligently about how you will ensure that culturally responsive practices are occurring in the classrooms of your school, particularly from the teachers that you will probably be evaluating. That's important. Your staff must be culturally competent, and you've got to be able to speak that in the interview. Next, number three, student motivation. That's going to come up. How do you motivate students? Because, see, you, you could have the most pedagogically sound teachers in your school, the most, the, the most culturally responsive, culturally competent teachers in your school. But they're strong in content. They're strong in pedagogy. But they know nothing about motivating young people. How are those young people going to be able to take advantage of the skill set and ability of a teacher if they're not willing to embrace the information? See, that's where you come in as far as that interview is concerned. You've got to be able to talk about, number one, how you will motivate students, how you will motivate staff, but ultimately how, we, how you will lead the effort in ensuring that teachers are motivating that teachers are inspiring, that teachers are encouraging. That's you. That's going to fall in your lap. So when, when you're in the interview, question could come up. Well, candidate, how will you go about motivating young people 
or what programs will you put in place that motivate children? Or how will you lead the effort in ensuring that staff motivate young people? What are the strategies, they'll ask you, that you bring that will help young people to sustain a sense of motivation throughout the course of a school year? You got to be able to answer that. You cannot sit in that, that, that office, in that interviewee seat, scratching your head, trying to brainstorm something on your, on your feet, on the spot, and expect to get that job. You have got to go in there already knowing. You got to go in there already having strategy formulated in your mind that here's what I will bring to motivate young people. Here's what I will bring to motivate staff. Here's what I will bring to share with staff so that they can in turn motivate young people. Some of it may come from your experiences in your prior life as, as teacher, because I'm making the assumption at some point you taught. So now, just by, on, by virtue of the fact that you're here um, interviewing for the position, you must have been a pretty good teacher. You must have been an excellent teacher if you've got the audacity to want to lead. So some of those strategies that you used in the classroom as teacher, you may want to talk about how you'll, how you'll be able to expand upon those in the school and, 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 and ensure that young people are motivated within your school. So student motivation another important component to your interview. Number four, staff motivation, staff relationships. You may get the question, how will you go about forging solid relationships with, with staff? In, in part one of, of, of these two videos, Thoughts to Consider for the Assistant Principal Interview, I talked extensively about your role as instructional leader and, 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 and supervisor and a clinical supervision approach. If you're seeing this video first, then when you finish watching this, I, I implore you to go to the first video, part one, and watch that when I go much more in depth relative to instructional leadership, supervision, and, um, and, and, and clinical supervision. So here I'm saying, I'm just kind of adding on to that. Interview would, interview would ask you, how will you go about forging solid relationships with, with staff, which puts you in position? You know, you want to be in position to be able to help a teacher to grow. You want to put yourself in position to be able to help a teacher to develop pedagogically. So they may ask you, how will you go about forging relationship with staff? You know, because as you forge relationship, as, as you and the, the rest of the leadership team forge relationship, it just makes for a better staff family see a, a, a family of educators as opposed to these these separate and apart educators working within their own little spaces in a building called classrooms or their own little worlds this family of collegial educators but that's where you come in in terms of how you forge those bonds how you forge those relationships so that's critical and that's another question that i'm, I'm certain will be asked of you Next, parental engagement. That's a big one. How will you go about ensuring that parents are involved? I mean, that's, that, that one's huge. It's, it's so big that I really wanted to in, incorporate it into part one. But part one was at 45 minutes, and I knew I needed to cut that short. So right now, I'm at 13 minutes and 46 seconds. seconds. So let's talk about it now. Parental engagement. No school can do this in isolation. No school can do this alone, particularly those schools that are underperforming, those schools that have been labeled priority schools, those schools that, that have young people at risk of failing. Can't do this in isolation. Gotta, gotta partner with parents even when, it's, when, it, when there's a struggle to get parents on board. Got to, got to do this in partnership with parents. So the question then, because the purpose of this video, both videos, is not to give you the strategy. The purpose is to get you thinking about the questions that will be asked. And then you're going to have to do your own homework in terms of the strategy. So I'm, I'm asking you, what will you say to the interviewer about how you will engage parents? How you will influence parents? How you will inspire parents? parents to be engaged, to be involved. 
Now, the question becomes engaged and involved in what? There's, there's, there's two things I want to look at here. Number one, how will they be engaged in their children's lives at home? Because as we know, unfortunately, there are parents out here in our world who are not engaged nor involved in their children's education. They're detached. Education being on this hand and child in this hand, it's like they stay separate from one another, see, instead of one. So I'm saying to you, as a leadership candidate, as an assistant principal candidate, what strategies will you bring to a school? Why should someone hire you and what strategies will you bring that will help parents to be engaged in their children's lives at home? So that begs the question of how will you form or forge relationship with parent? Because you can't get that information to parent relative to home if you don't have relationship and rapport with parent first off. So it begs the second question, how will you forge relationship with parents, period? See, how will you get them into the school beyond a youngster gets in trouble, beyond an, a, a program where youngsters performing, beyond youngster gets sick, beyond youngster has to be picked up from school early? You know, those, those various ways that parents come to school. How will you get parent to come to school as it relates to the educational growth and development of child? See, that's that's the question. See, you've got to go in there with that answer. Again, not, not scratching your head, not brainstorming, not trying to come up with something on, on the spot, on your toes at the interview and saying all the right stuff that sounds good. That's not going to cut it. And the person that's interviewing you will see right through it. I'm saying to you, You've got to walk into that interview knowing what you're going to do. Being able to e express, articulate the strategies that you will use to get parents into the building. And then once they're in the building, the things that you're going to share. Again, I know that you're there to assist the principal, but the person interviewing you is looking at you as a leader. They're not just looking at you as an assistant. They're looking at you as a leader because you're number two. You got principal and then there's you. If there's a team of assistant principals, then you got the principal and then the team each being number two because you guys are not ranked. See? So in terms of who you are as leader, in this case, as it, as, as, as it relates to parental engagement, parental involvement, what strategies will you bring? See? What strategies will you bring to get parents into the building for for, for, for certain meetings or, or certain programs, whatever it is you have in the school, how will you pack the auditorium? See, how will you pack the cafeteria? How will you pack the gymnasium? How will you get, how will you get 100% attendance at the school's open house? And how will you sustain that throughout the course of the year? That person interviewing you wants to know that. And you can't go in there fumbling about it. You got to have an answer. You got to have a response. See, but now that you got them, what are you going to give them in terms of how they can be productive parents at home? You've got to go in there armed with that information. If you're not, then you're probably not going to get the job. You know, as a sidebar, I have over the years received calls and emails and so forth from folks who were interviewing for a job just asking me. Um, if, if, if I had like one wrote me today and said, do you have some nuggets, right? So they, they just want to know if I've got some tips, I've got some strategies and I would get them. I've been getting them for years, but over the past month, since I put out part one of this two part series thoughts to consider for the assistant principal interview, I'm, I get, I'm, I'm inundated with calls. Now I'm bombarded with calls from people who are looking for information. And, and when I look at some of the questions that they're asking me, then it becomes very clear to me why they haven't gotten the job. Because they didn't go in there with the right information. See, they're asking me questions of things that in my mind they should already know when you're interviewing for the print, for the assistant principalship. So I'm not criticizing nor condemning them for not knowing, but it's just, it's just making it clear to me why they didn't get the position. Because they're saying to me, I've been interviewing, I've been interviewing, some of them call me, I've been on 10 interviews and I, I can't get hired. And then when I, when I start, start probing, 
and, and asking them, well, what are, what are you, what are you stumbling on? What's stumping you? What, what do you think it is? And they start telling me some, you know, we just have a dialogue and it, it becomes crystal clear to me what's going on. You can't go into that interview not knowing. You can't go into that interview unprepared. You've got to know your stuff. I'm going to say it again. You've got to know your stuff. So in this case, we're talking about parental engagement. And you've got to go in there because, see, the person interviewing you is probably is, is, is more than likely senior level um, leadership. It, it could be the principal of the school, but it could be someone from central office. So we're talking about people who are under pressure. We're, we're not talking about some people that don't have don't have a horse in this race. We're talking about people who are under pressure. So now they they've got their own pressures. They've got their own demands that they've got to meet. And they're looking to bring you on to assist in the process. So now you sit in the room and they ask you about parents and you don't have an answer. Or you're sitting there brainstorming and it's clear to them that you're doing nothing but brainstorming. You did not come in here prepared to answer this question then why should they hire you? See, you be calling me, asking me for advice. I'm telling you, you got to go in there prepared. So in this case, being able to express how, how, how you will ensure that parental engagement is happening at a high level. Parental engagement. Let's move on. There's a question that, that I, I feel strongly about. This is another one I wanted in part one, but just couldn't fit it. But here, here's the question. Someone is probably going to ask you, what are your leadership strengths? What are you strong at? See, what is your leadership strength? You got to be able to answer that, although you haven't been a leader. Because they're looking for something out of you. They want to see if you exhibit leadership quality and leadership capability, even though you're sitting in that seat as probably still a, a classroom teacher. They may ask you, what, what, what might be your leadership strength or your leadership strengths? You got to be able to answer that question. What is there? What is it about you, your assets, your character, your skill set, your ability, your attitude? What is it that you bring that's a strength for that school? But in the context of leadership, see. You, you can't sit there, you know, uh, mm, uh, let me see, you know, I haven't really thought about that. You, you can't do that. That's, you done at that point. You might as well say, <laughs> it was nice talking to you and, and, and just exit the room because you, you're done. You, you cannot sit there with that. They ask you, and, and, and I should say that whole interview, you are looking this person in the eye, but non, in a non-threatening way. You're not, you're not in there intimidating anybody. You're not going in there threatening the principal because if the principal feels, wow, this person, this person is going to come in here and vie for my job, then you can forget about it. You might be the strongest candidate out there, but if you if you're given a, like like an, an aura, an aura that you're going to be in there vying for the person's job that's interviewing you, you coming in there intimidating, they're not going to hire you just for that reason alone. They're not going to tell you that. I'm just keeping it real with you. All right, you got to come in there as a humble servant that you were there to serve, that you were there to assist, but you've got to exhibit confidence. See, they've got to see that. See, they, they, they've got, like I'm sitting up here, they, they, they've got to see your power. They've got to see your confidence. They've got to see your positive attitude. they got to see it, got to feel it. So you, you, so, so you got to find a balance between showing your confidence, showing your assertiveness, but not going in there in a way that I'm coming in here to steal your job from you, see? Because a lot of folks fall short because they come in too aggressive. You don't want to go in there aggressive. You want to go in there assertive. So you're therefore, you're maintaining eye contact, but you're being humble at it, not aggressive. So let me use that word one more time. You are not going into that interview aggressively. You're going into that interview assertively assertive and you're making it crystal clear that i am here to serve i am here to assist the leader see you're there 
to assist the leader with, with, with everything that's, that, that's attempting to be carried out in that school. So with that said, the question might be, what is what are what what are your leadership leadership strengths? So what what give me an example of your leadership strength? And it one of them might be because I understand my role in in assisting the principal. I understand my role as a servant to this school community. See, that's a leadership strength because you're 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 acknowledging that you understand your role and your lane that you must stay in through the process, right? But then here's where they trip you up. Watch this one. And let me say, like I said in the other video, I'm at 25 minutes right now, right? It looks like I'm going, I'm going to be on for a little bit, not too long, but I'm at 25 minutes and 42 seconds. If you're discouraged by how much time I've been speaking, like I said in the other one, shut me off. Hit stop, right? Go watch some television. Go out to a movie, right? Go to the ice cream place and get you a cone, right? Uh, go, 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 to, go, go see a basketball game. Go play. Go do whatever. Because you're not serious. You don't want this. You don't want this job. If my 25, 26 minutes now is too much for you, you don't want this. You're not, I mean, think about it. You, you listening right now to a 14-year principal. You sitting here right now listening to a person that hired many assistant principals, but also denied many assistant principal candidates. You talking to some, you, you listening to someone right now that knows something about this. You, you, you're listening to someone right now that trains leaders, elite school leaders, assistant principals, principals, aspiring principals, central office administrators all over the United States. I know something about this. So if you decide that, that, that I'm taking too much time and you want it just a little five minute clip, a little 10 minute clip, you go ahead and do something else. And then watch that person, that next person walking in your job. Okay. You watch that next candidate walk it. You just, just stand outside it, sit in your car and watch the new vice principal walk in there with the job because they went in there prepared and you wanted to shut the long video down and go play. Now, you know, I'm being respectful when I say that, but I'm just trying to, I'm trying to step on your toes to make sure that you watch the entire video, regardless how long I take. If I take an hour, watch the hour. And then when I finish hit rewind and watch it again, Actually, I'm talking old school. There's no rewind button. Just hit, just, just, just take the little ball and slide it back, right? And play it again, or hit the arrow and it'll play again, right? So let's keep going. They going. I asked you just now, just to get us back on track. I said the the interviewer might might ask, "What are your leadership strengths?" But now watch this. They may trip you up and say, "Hey, candidate, what are your leadership weaknesses?" Oh man. <laughs> What are your leadership weaknesses? Now, I, I know this, I know this definitively. This is what this is what trips candidates up. Not just in, in ter terms of school leadership interviews, any kind of interview. This is the one that, that keeps people from getting the job. This is it right here. Because the person might say, because of ego, and, and, and just because they think that this is the answer that, that, that the person wants to hear. They'll say, oh, I don't have any weaknesses. <laughs> They'll say, I have no weaknesses. And the person on the other side of the desk knows that all of us have weaknesses. The person, the person sitting there interviewing you has weaknesses, right? So by you saying, I have no weaknesses, I have no flaws, I'm perfect, you just talked yourself out of the job. No, you got you got to come in there strategic on that question. And you got to answer the question letting the person know how humble you are, letting them see your humility and disclosing a weakness but you word it in a way that it sounds like a strength. Let me let me give you an example of what I mean by that cuz I might have confused you. Like the person says, "What's your leadership weakness?" Like if the question came to me, I, I might say something like this, and this is what I'm. Rec this is one recommendation, but but this is based just based on who I am, the way I'm wired, my DNA. I might say, well, one of my leadership weaknesses is 
I just want it so badly that, that, I, that I'm willing to just roll up my sleeves and, and just do it all, work all sorts of hours, work all weekend. I just want it badly, right? Now, I didn't make myself look weak in that answer. I made it look like I'm, I'm all in and I'm going all out. But it's a weakness because I'm saying that I'm going to give it a thousand percent. But implied in there is that I'll probably burn out at the same time. So now as me characterizing that as a weakness, it, it enables me to open up the conversation about the need for me to develop my my skill in delegating responsibility and authority to others see it opens up that door for me to engage in that conversation so so here so so let, let me let me let me tie this thing together for you so here I'm saying, yeah, I'm all in. I, I want it bad. I'm rolling up my sleeves. I'm, I'm, I'm willing to work these extra hours all night, come in early, 6, 5, 30, 6 o'clock, working weekends, Saturday and Sunday. But I know that that's not going to be productive for me over the long haul. So therefore, I've got to strengthen my ability to delegate a lot of responsibility and authority to others toward empowering them. Bam. See, that's how you handle that. That's how you're able to turn the question of what are your weaknesses into a strength. See, it shows that you're on your toes. It shows that you're thinking and you're not going in there actually saying you're weak. Or you have weaknesses. See, I'm saying you got to be strategic. That's a question that a lot of people ask me. How do I hand, how do I handle that question? So you got to be very strategic with that question. You got to be very careful with that question. You've got to be very meticulous in how you go about answering that question because you don't want that question to trip you up and, and you therefore talk yourself out of the position. All right. So what are your leadership strengths? What are your leadership weaknesses? Let's get, I'm, I'm getting down to the end. Here's a big question. It's another one that could kind of trip you up. The question is, the interviewer says, why should I hire you? Hmm. Once again, why should I hire you? Now you got to be careful on that one because you can't go in there cocky. You can't, you, you can't go about that question aggressively. You, you, you got to be assertive, as I said before, but you can't be cocky. You can't be egotistical in that one. But you want but you want to come across in a way that you sound convincing. Because it, 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 at the end of the day, however you respond to it, because you, you, you're conveying to that person that I'm that guy. I'm that gal. I'm the one for the job, right? Because I will be able to do X, Y, and Z for this school. As a matter of fact, Although that's a sufficient answer, let's, let's give you an even better one. Because what I just gave you was a feature of you. But, you want, but, but more so, importantly, you want to talk about the benefits of having you. So instead of selling features, you're selling benefits, right? So hiring you will take the school to another level. Hiring you will raise the achievement levels. Hiring you will raise the morale of staff. Hiring you will increase the level of parental engagement. Hiring you will increase the level of motivation of children. Hiring you will decrease a dropout rate if it, ex if it exists. Hiring you will increase the college acceptance rate if, if that exists, if we're talking about a high school. Obviously, if we're not, then the various ideas that you generate as it relates to elementary and middle school. But the bottom line is you got to have an answer. Not, not something like because I'm the best candidate for the job, right? I'm the best one in here. That, that's not good enough. You've got to leave a lasting impression. You've got to be able to say something to the interviewer that when you are long gone, when you've left that office, you are driving back to your home or wherever you're going, that person's still sitting at the desk like just thinking about you like this. Hmm. Man. He was strong. Man. Man. She was strong because, because ultimately you, you want to blow them away. See, you want them feeling like I don't even want to interview anybody else. See, that's how that works. 
So, so, so you got to come in there so prepared and then, and then you're going to bring it home. Why should I hire you? And then that's when you, everything you've talked about, you know, all this information you got from part one and then this one, part two, and, that, and, then, and then the information that you brought that I didn't even cover, and now you bring it home. Why should I hire you and here you come? Bam. See? But again, you're selling benefits. You may, you, you may want to throw a feature of you, feature meaning something about you. But at the end of the day, you got to close it with the benefit of, 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 why, you'll be, of, of why you're there. What, are, what, are the, what does the school gain? What are the benefits that they gain as a result of you being on that staff? You got you to gotta drill that. You got to send that home. You got to bring that home. That's the part you got to hit that out the park, man. It's got to go over the fence, see? Because you you got to leave a lasting impression. Now, there's one more pertinent question that they're going to ask you. I, I almost don't even want to say they might ask you. I kind of want to say they're going to ask you. Here's the question. It's another one that trips folks up. Do you have any questions of me? Hear me well, candidate. I'm, I'm talking to you. Let me get right up here on you. I'm talking to you. If you sit there, I'm the interviewer. Let me let me let, let's role play. You have any questions? Yeah, do you have any any further questions or closing questions of me? Now here's you. No, I think we covered it all. No. You just cost yourself a job. That means you, you have no questions? You know everything? You know everything about this school? You know everything there is to know? You know everything about me? You know everything about these students? You know everything? When I say me, I mean the interviewer. You know everything about these students? You know everything about staff? You know everything about parents? You know everything about curriculum? You know everything about operations? You know, you know everything about this school? Support staff? The, the dynamics of the school? You, you got it all? No. You know, it's like a game show. You, do you, do you, have, you have any questions of me? And you, here you go. No, I think we've covered all here at game show. And... <laughs> You know how them little buzzer sounds on the game show <laughs> with a red box, right? A cross, red cross. You you done. You can't answer that question like that. You better be thinking of a question that you're going to raise as a result of that interview. I don't want to necessarily say come in with a can question, but maybe, maybe you might have a can question in the back of your mind because if 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 you get to a point where you you get nervous, you get stuck, and you and, and it's not flowing the way you want it to on that question, maybe you got something can stored here, right? So throw that at them. But if not, you got to be anticipating what you're going to ask because you are listening to everything that person is saying attentively. See. So now when they ask you the question, what, fo what uh, closing questions may you have of us? Because it may be a team of interviewers. Or what closing question do you have of me? Or do you have any questions of me? You, you better have a question. In fact, I, I would recommend three questions. See, Because that shows that you really want this job. That shows that you're, you, that, that, that shows that you're engaged. In this conversation, you, it's, it's not a one sided thing. You are engaged. So now it's like you're so confident, not cocky, not aggressive, but you're confident and assertive that now you're interviewing them. See, so you you so, so you go on and pose the question because that's showing them that, wow, dude, OK, this person's sharp. This person's on the ball. You're interview. He's interviewing us. She's interviewing us again without being aggressive. But being assertive. See, not being cocky, not being egotistical, but being humble. That's crucial. And then there's this last thing I want to say. It's not a question, but this is my last point. And I'm at 39 minutes. Are, are you still there? <laughs> I'm at 39 minutes. That means it's going to be a 40 minute video. And I'm hoping that you you stuck it out for the whole thing. In fact, I hope you 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 go back and watch it again and again. A lot of people reached out to me and said they watched it several times. The first one, part one. So here's this last point. This is not a question, but this is this is important. I word it this way: close the deal. See, close the deal. Here's what I mean. Any salesman, 
You go and buy yourself a car, you go and buy yourself a house, you go buy yourself anything. At the end of the day, they have to close the deal. If they don't close it, then the sale is not theirs. It's going to be somebody else's because the customer's going somewhere else. You got to close the deal. Before you leave out of that office, for reinforcement, remind that person that I want this job. See, you, why, why are you going to spend all this time preparing, researching the school? You know, we talked about that when the, in the first, the part one, knowing the school. How dare you walk in there and you don't know the school? You don't know anything about the school. You go in there blind. Then you may as well leave you, because it will come across that you did not do your homework. You did not do your research. So assuming that you did, and you did all this homework, you did all this research, you learned all you could about the school. And, 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 and now you, you, you walk in there and you, you're prepared. And, and, and not just the preparation for the school, but the preparation for the interview. And now you're fully prepared. I mean, you, you're in there, you're, you're answering all these questions. I mean, you, you, you field in every question they throw at you, man. You got this, you got this, you got this. You catching it, you catching it, you catching it, you catching it. You got it. And you're feeling good. But now we're down to the last few seconds. The interview is over. And you didn't close the deal. Ah, you may have cost yourself a job. You got to close the deal. Let them know, sir, ma'am, I just want you to know, I really want this job. Because I feel I bring to this job everything this school needs in order to take it to where you want it to be. Or ask the question, how soon will I hear from you, sir? How soon should I anticipate hearing from you, ma'am? Right? Because I really want this job. Right? I, I, I really, I, I want it for me, but I really feel that it's a win-win. I feel that the school will benefit from my presence. I feel that children will benefit from my leadership. I feel that staff will benefit from my leadership. It's like a reinforcement. You're closing the deal. You're leaving a, a, a last impression and then a lasting impression on that interviewer that you're the person for the job. See? So I've covered everything I want to cover. I'm I, Again, for those of you who will see this video for the first time, see this channel for the first time, perhaps see me for the first time. Here's what I want you to do. If you're watching this video, chances are you're an aspiring administrator, an aspiring vice principal. And you may have no idea that I've got a channel on YouTube called Message to a New and Aspiring Principal. As of today, it's 36 videos strong, where I'm talking about a plethora of areas of education, of, of I'm sorry, of leadership. You might want to go into those videos to also help you with the interview because a lot, of what the, a lot of what's in those videos are the specifics to these broad topics I talked about in this part two and part one. That's when I go in depth with what, that's, what that entails and what it's all about. So I would encourage you to go on and look at all those videos. Um, I'm an author as well. And in this case, a book I wrote called The Principle 50, Critical Leadership Questions for Inspiring school-wide excellence, I would add that to your repertoire. So you read that book, you watch this video, which is part two, I'm calling it More Thoughts to Consider for the Assistant Principal Interview, then go and watch Thoughts to Consider for, assist, for an Assistant Principal inter, Job Interview, part one, read the Principal 50, and then I think you're going to have all you need to go out and get that job. Lastly, when you do, and if anything I gave you, as far as these videos were of assistance, any of this video, any of part one, any of that book, anything else you may have explored of me, my website is principalcafele.com. Once again, principalcafele, one word, dot com. I don't have to spell it for you because if you're watching this video, it should be right on the bottom of the screen. Then go on the website and look at the other resources. Just, just just, download them. Just print them out. Look at the videos. Look at the resources. Look at everything that's there. And then once you get the job, here's what I want you to do. And then I'm going to close. Send me an email. 
or go to my, one of my social media pages, Facebook, Twitter. I'm at Principal Cafele on both. Principal Cafele, one word on Twitter. Principal Cafele, two words on Facebook. Go to either one and thank me. <laughs> Say thank you, Principal Cafele. I got the job. And I'll say, job well done. And for me personally, you couldn't give me a greater reward. I spent 45 minutes here talking on this video and 45 minutes on the other video. I can't ask for anything more than for a candidate, someone I've probably never met in my life, to come to me or reach out to me and say, thank you. I got the job. And the reason I would have be so bold to say that is because that's why I made this video so that you can get the job. So if you got the job, just let me know, let the kid know that you got the job. Enough said, it's 45 minutes, look here. I appreciate you watching. Tell a friend, tell a candidate, tell, some, tell someone else that you know. Watch these videos and then go on out there and get that job. Thanks for listening. Good luck to you.